So right now, again, Rahil Raza, she's going to join us, president of the Council for Muslims Facing Tomorrow, founding member of the Muslim Reform Movement. Would you believe that? And she's the author of the book, Their Jihad, Not My Jihad. Miss Raza, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, you're a very brave person for saying while the war world mourns Orlando, care goes on the attack. What do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that care is famous for using any kind of um, event, whether it is uh, terrorists or, uh, you know, any kind of um, tragedy to their own advantage. Uh, they always turn it around and make themselves seem to be the victims, no matter what happens. So even in this they call, they, But they called you an Islamophobe, a Muslim woman? You know, they've made Islamophobia into an industry. And you know as well as I know that this is a term that has been coined to stop debate and discussion. And unfortunately, they've succeeded because the white liberal guilt sets in and it stops people from speaking out or critiquing anything to do with Islam or Muslims. Rahil, do you know that they put me on a list called the Islamophobia Network's Outer Core? They put Michael Savage on that list? <laughs> well, anyone. Anyone who speaks about Islam or Muslims is an Islamophobe. And if one were to say that killing innocent people is wrong, which is what you were just speaking about, the inhumanity, I don't care who the person is, but if you are killing innocent people, then there's something very, very wrong about that. And it is beyond my understanding why people can't say that. They can't articulate that. They will speak about everyone killing, but if it is a Muslim who's involved, they just shut up. It's told that Why do you think that the media will go to groups like CARE after an Orlando rather than go to your group? Why do you think that is? Well, because of political correctness, because we speak the truth. And everyone is not ready to face the truth, both Muslims and non-Muslims. You have a president who's not willing to face the truth. We have a prime minister who's not willing to face the truth. So they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that we have a virus of radical Islam within our midst and that we need to do something about it. So they rather... Now you're, there uh, Rahil, you're a recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal for Service to Canada. You're a Canadian citizen? I'm a very proud Canadian citizen. Well, in Canada, aren't there very strict laws against the kind of uh, spoken word that you're speaking about? Yes, they are. But, you know, I'm not uh, promoting hate like many of our clerics and religious leaders are. I'm just saying what is the fact. Our organization is you know, has a mandate to expose the problem, educate the masses, and then eradicate the problem. But unless we expose people like CARE, how are Muslims and non-Muslims going to understand that they don't represent the majority of the Muslim world? They like to say that they have, but look at their credibility. They've already been declared a terrorist organization by the United Arab Emirates, which is a Muslim country. We also know that they're unindicted co-conspirators in a terrorist trial. They're just playing on the psyche of people who are already feeling uh, guilty. And so they use Islamophobia as a coined term to stop any debate. Have, have you been consulted by anyone in the Obama administration to advise them on Islamic issues? You must be joking, right? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. Well, you say that with, uh, you know... Quite, you're making quite a statement. I mean, why wouldn't you, as a Muslim woman, be invited to discuss your views with someone in Homeland Security? Yes, I would love to. But no, the, we, we have never been invited. I have never been invited. Uh, the people who advise President Obama don't like what I say and do because I am speaking about a virus uh, within the Muslim world and it's hard for them to stomach that and I don't think President Obama wants to hear that either. It's so much easier to hear somebody who's whining uh, and constantly saying that they are the victims even though innocent people have been killed. So it takes common sense and civil society to understand who the, where the problem lies. Not with those who are trying to reform uh, Muslims, but those who are... What, what do you mean by reform? When you say reform Muslims, Muslim reform movement, can you tell the audience what you mean by that? 
Yes, the Muslim Reform Movement is a movement where we have a declaration where we are saying that Muslims need to move from 7th century and ideas of caliphate into the 21st century. We want Muslims to learn to live in a liberal democracy with issues of peace, national security. We want them to stand for compassion and gender equality. All the things that brought people like us to the West, where we, we came here because we embraced the values uh, and the principles of a liberal democracy. And those Muslims who think that they want to live in the 7th century and they want to uh, use tribal concepts of armed jihad to constantly wage wars against others, we are telling them, stop, this is not right. Amazing. I, I feel like... website, we have our... Though, Rahil, I feel as though I'm speaking to my own head with you. You're amazingly articulate. I, I'm so speechless, and that's not my norm. How is it that you say the truth like this and get away with it? It's shocking as though I'm talking to me. <laughs> that, that, that's hilarious. But the point is that, you know, what I learned in the Islam that I grew up with, which was about truth and justice, and it doesn't matter if it's your own children, if it's your own community, we have to speak the truth. And the problem is, in this particular case, it is my community. And because I care for my faith and my community, and I feel that my faith has been stolen and represented by a mutated, violent ideology, which is a cult, I have to speak out. I have no other choice because the future of my children and grandchildren is at stake here. The future. Why, why doesn't Obama know that? And you know and I know that by, by Muslim law, he is a Muslim through patrilineal descent. Isn't that true? One has to declare themselves a Muslim, and that he hasn't publicly at least done that. So, you know. All right, so let's say he's not a Muslim, that he's actually a practicing Christian. Then why is he so given to apologizing for radical Islam without even mentioning it? Well, because of political correctness, because he has a policy of appeasing the Islamists. Perhaps he thinks that, uh, you know, if he appeases them, they won't harm his country. But we've seen it all, all to the contrary. You know, you have to just connect the dots. Attack after attack will continue. And I have said time and again in my writings that they are at war with us. How hard is that to understand for Obama or for anyone else? And personally, I think he knows it. He's not a stupid man. He's intelligent enough to know what the problem is he has his own reasons for not speaking out perhaps it's people who are advising him uh, perhaps he's afraid to speak out because speaking out comes with its own set of challenges you know uh, having death threats sent uh, to you I suppose is not something that everyone finds palatable <laughs> what, what, okay let's start from the top where were you born Rahil I was born in Pakistan and when did you emigrate to the West we left Pakistan in 1979 when the first signs of Wahhabi Salafi ideology were coming in, went and lived in Dubai for eight years, and from there migrated to Canada and came here in nine, at the end of 1988 and have lived here ever since then, and this is home. Okay, so you live in Canada, you're an outspoken re Muslim reformist, and yet you're ignored by the mainstream media in America when you're exactly what they need to be uh, promoting and talking about. I, I won't ask why, because I know that they're all cowards and they're all stupid, by the way. They're pretty stupid. But, Rahil, have you faced security threats? Have you faced threats in Canada? Yes, of course. I have death threats. I have a fatwa. I ha well, the fatwa comes directly from Saudi Arabia. Um, I have a death threat. I, ha I get hate mail, and I've had uh, threats from a vigilante group in the United Kingdom. So that comes with the turf. I know that if they're threatening me, they are listening to what I'm saying, and they don't like it. And that's the point. To be a thorn, so, what I'm trying to say is that my fear is a very small drop in the ocean of the work that I have to do. If I get wow. intimidated and scared by the threats, then the extremists succeed, because that's what wow. they do. They threaten. You're amazing. You're an amazing person, Rahil. So you're trying almost, uh, it's, it's like, it, you're like uh, against all odds trying to reform Islam when we all know that is Christianity went through reformation and the only thing that can save the world would be some kind of reformation in Islam you're certainly not alone are you what percent of Muslims in the West do you think are of your opinion as opposed to the more fundamentalist view can you break that down for us 
Yes. So at the moment, we I was just checking our Facebook page. We have over 62,000 followers, and Muslims and non-Muslims have joined us in this movement because they want to see the change. And we also have organizations like the Clarion Project, which helps us through videos, documentaries, and films in exposing radical Islam. And that is our mission and vision, both in our organization and with the reform movement. You know that the Christian reform took next year, it will be 500 years. We have just started sowing the seeds of reform. Whether or not we will see the change in my lifetime, I don't know. But someone has to start the movement. Someone has to start speaking out. And there are many others like me. You have Dr. Zudi Jasser in the United States. We have in the yes. United Kingdom Majid Nawaz with the Quilliam Foundation. Uh, we have people in Europe. Not as many as we would like, obviously, because then people like CARE come out who are, you know, funded in the billions uh, and have, you know, um, millions of people following them. But, you know, truth does prevail, and people are not stupid when they hear us speak, when they see what we write, when they understand that we are working from within the faith to bring about change. Amazing. Bring about Rahil, change. this is an amazing conversation for me, and I and when she gives out a, a Facebook or an email or whatever she has, please write it down because she needs all the help that we can give her. I'll be right back.